Well, we have returned. It's been uh, it's been a few while. Well, it's been a few weeks actually since we've actually had a decent multiplayer stream going on here at the Paradox Towers here live in Stockholm. For those that don't know, my name is Matt, and I'll be guiding you through the amazing uh, setup. Kind of getting annoyed having a resolution set to 2486 or whatever it is. No, actually, I can confirm we are running at glorious 1080p here today on our. Uh, and our production and uh, oh, looks like I still have that on there we go sorry about that it was a little bit of audio mixing going on here as uh, I am how in, in fact running the production at the same time and making sure that everybody is in one place welcome to this last week this last week of European Rosales 4 here live from the Paradox Tower and you know honestly it's been a long journey and we've had a lot of time to uh, well Pretty much do their things, and and all honesty, I also have the chat in front of me, so we'll be a little bit more interactive this time around, and uh, we'll be talking to you as much as we possibly can, because you're right there. Specifically, Airwolf asks, "Hey guys, how did Portugal manage to get rid of his colonies?" Well, there's a good reason for that, to say the least. Mainly, what he did was was something that can some people would consider to be ever so slightly on the gamey side of things. Basically, what he did was he moved his capital to South America, specifically to Barabuco. And effectively, what that did was it pretty much negated all the colonial nations that he had. And specifically, if we go towards the uh, colonial map mode, uh, there we go, colonial regions. As you can see, in Africa, there are no col colonial areas. However, they are in South America. Now, what happened is, is that basically what he said was, look, my capital is on the same continent as all of these colonial regions. So because of that, they don't turn into colonies. It's a bit of a gamey way of doing things, and he was ejected from Europe. Uh, basically, it was a result of being ejected uh, from Europe. However, it worked out in the end because now he's pretty much got most of South America under control under the big uh, green blob that is Portugal. So that is your answer to that particular thing. Let me quickly check here. And uh, for those people that are asking, please turn the sound up uh, for voice-wise. I suggest that uh, you turn on the sound on uh, your uh, audio mixer on board on your computer. And it's all fine on this end. I just checked on like two PCs that are standing besides me. So in theory, you should be just dandy. So yeah, here we go. So let's get underway. I have the uh, official MP channel here as well. So let's see what is going to happen. I have been told by several of our uh, players that we will have, we'll be having potentially a few wars already running. And as you can see, there is a couple of wars running within uh, within mainland Europe, and everybody's pretty much clicking through their events right now, which is why we're currently not uh, kicking off just yet. But as you can see, there is a massive war currently going on with the uh, with the Danish conquest of Utrecht. Utrecht, of course, being over here, and that uh, Ming has a big stack already already over there, which is going to cause a couple of issues. Of course, um, the uh, there we go. We're finally on the way as the armies are starting to move. The uh, the Allied uh, armies of Denmark, as well as all their uh, all their other armies that's actually quite a significant amount of troops that are just rampaging around the terrain they've got over two million troops running around if we go towards their allies france who's got an absolute massive swath of territory slightly less than 1.5 million troops uh, available to them but of course they've got those french ideas which allow them to um We'll get some absolutely ridiculous army size. Of course, considering Ming is on the other side, it should, in theory, help not help too much. However, what we missed last time around was that some of the uh, the Dutch coalition managed to hold off against the Ming, as well as the Danes. That's right, they actually managed to hold off. And they pretty much have several layers of armies on standby here. They got them over here in Breda, they got them over here in Brabant, they've got them over in Zeeland, they're pretty much everywhere. So as soon as a uh, battle commences, as soon as one uh, army moves their stack into, they can pretty much reinforce from all sides. So they pretty much have over 200,000 um, 200, units on standby to pretty much support any sort of engagement, which helps quite a lot. So what happened to the Netherlands? Well, Netherlands kind of got partitioned by the Danes after deciding the blob into uh, Trier, as well as some of the other territories. But however, they are still in North, uh, Northern America. 
and there's definitely quite a lot of stuff going on over there. So what we can do actually is uh, we take a look at uh, some of our shenanigans that are currently going on military-wise, because I am really, really curious on who has the biggest army currently, and that is going to cause significant issues for whoever is going to be on the receiving side. It's Portugal and Portugal and Sweden, as well as Ming, in the top three. I don't see any of these massive battles erupting just yet, but the three largest armies in the world at the moment are on the side of the Danish coalition, which is definitely going to help them. I'm going to quickly look over towards Wiz, who's running this coalition. He's got yeah, pretty much setting up defensive ideas right now. So right now he's looking to get that additional army tradition, as well as those morale for, uh, morale for armies that he's looking for. And that's got to be pretty big deal, to say the least. How did Sweden get so powerful? Well, basically the problem there was that Sweden decided, you're not, you know what, Muscovy, I'm not going to allow you to get Muscovy, so to speak, over here. And uh, you're going to be forced to not be able to create Russia at any point in time. So basically what happened there was, is they were just not anything to do anything. Why is Lithuania Byzantium? Well, basically Lithuania switched to Byzantium at some point. That's pretty much the gist of it. There's not much you can really say about that. Of course, uh, Egypt is running around as well down here. They pretty much got all of uh, Eastern Africa under their control. Malaya has uh, advanced significantly into India, which uh, is going to be very helpful for them. Hindustan being pretty much be reduced to shambles. Ming being pretty huge. Japan being invaded by Malaya right now, and they're not going to survive beyond this session because it's mainly uh, the player who came out as Malaya has decided, uh, as Japan even, has decided not to continue in this session because he knew that he was going to be completely destroyed. Uh, let's see here. Why are the Netherlands so powerful? Well, because of these. Wilhelm's Lant. Willems Lunt, or whatever you want to call it. New Netherlands down here, of course. Uh, they got some small invasion forces, actually, here by uh, the Dutch, who uh, decided to move in. But uh, we've got a couple of small engagements here uh, that the Dutch can actually maybe able to hold back. These generals uh, they are not the greatest in the world, sadly enough, but it should be enough to uh, do the things that they need to do. He needs to create the United States. I 100% agree. The Dutch will have to retreat after this battle. Are there going to be any major engagements in the Netherlands yet? I haven't seen any major engagements just yet. It's still the 170,000 stack on standby. I'm actually really curious about the about the uh, the Danish coalition and their army size, and the army setup. Because look at this. They're pretty much going for a 100% blockade all over the French uh, area, and those are all trade ships. So those are Colombian trade ships, and one moment, I am going to need to quickly change something because my Steam overlay is sadly still up. So we're quickly going to go and uh, remove that from our... Uh, there we go. So that's now been removed. Sorry about the Crusader Kings uh, trailer right there. And there we go, we're back. Not much has gone on in the, in the two seconds that you missed. Dutch and the Danes are still uh, at a big standoff here. And Denmark is, uh, look at this. What amount of attrition are they getting? 3% attrition by just standing around. Denmark still, they don't really care. They got 120,000 people, or at least manpower, on standby. And they can pretty much do whatever they want. Uh, off topic, if Paradox hired a game designer, what would be his duties? Basically, design games and code them. So you would need to know several types of uh, code language. Mainly C, if I believe. C plus and that sort of thing. So, Does anybody have any suggestions on making the game more difficult? Me and my friend played a game where I started as Athens and started, he started as Rodo. So we still succeeded in conquering half of Europe for me and everything in India for him uh, within 300 years. Um, there is still... Yeah, play Iron Man mode at first. Uh, on the other hand, playing co-op is is super useful because as soon as you grow, uh, especially if you start down here, you have so much room to expand fairly easily. Uh, it's 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 difficult. Ooh, high liberty desire here for Denmark. Spenegal has high super high liberty desire. That's kind of kind of crazy. And also, there's a call for peace. 
we still haven't seen an engagement. Anyway, if you want to make it more difficult for you, uh, play instead of playing co-op, play versus. Uh, who can uh, become the biggest country the quickest while still attacking each other relatively frequently. Of course, Chimu World Conquest while your friend is doing, um, well, World Conquest with Ryoku is, of course, another way of doing it. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a challenge for you. Meanwhile, there seems to be a massive engagement here in Oman, the Omani uh, being invaded by the Swedes. So most of the Swedish forces, as well as the Byzantinian forces, are down here in Oman. This is gonna this is gonna put some major major release of pressure on the Dutch because all of a sudden there there there's about two hundred thousand troops less trying to invade their homelands, but they're pretty much waiting for somebody to attack their stacks. As soon as the attack comes in, they'll be probably be on a superior position, especially by the rivers here. They pretty much put their defensive perimeter up here, which allows them to pretty much defend across the Rhine and the, uh, is it a Mosa, I believe? Not entirely sure about the name, but um, yeah, they, uh, they should be able to defend themselves fairly easily if they manage to get uh, attacked from across the river. We shall see, though. In the meantime, let's get take a look here at the world, because, uh, you know, honestly, this is the last session that we'll be playing for the near future. Let's go to country and specifically score comparison. Who is in the lead right now? It's Portugal, who is uh, in the lead right now, but a firm 3,000 points ahead, and it's going to be fairly clear. They're going to win, and they also win themselves a prize. That's right, they win themselves a prize. We got a big trophy, which is going to be handed out afterwards. And uh, number two, however, is still up for debate. It could be France, it could be Denmark, it could be the Netherlands, although I really think it's going to be Denmark at this rate because they need to overtake the French as soon as possible by forcing this war out. And the thing is, however, is that Denmark has already won a, a series themselves. And the same goes for Portugal. So whoever of the two managed to come out on top here will get themselves that prize they so badly want. However, if the French can hold back the Danes, it will force them into a third position, which basically means that... Uh, the guy who's playing is Denmark, whose name is Wiz, will for the first time uh, will for the first time manage to get all three prizes over three sessions. So yeah, are they digging trenches already? Well, they are in Belgium almost, so you know it kind of comes with the territory. Quickly looking over, no USA just yet. I'm actually needing to look at uh, Liberty Desire because that's going to be important. Yeah, Liberty Desire for New Netherlands is uh, 90 94 percent. As soon as a um, yeah, as soon as as soon as they hit that 50 percent, oh there we go. As soon as that uh, liberty desire becomes 50, then they may declare independence. However, uh, USA, come on, come on! I want to see USA, USA. Peter so badly wanted to see USA as well. And this is the last session, so it, it, it's kind of to be expected that USA forms. And of course, everybody in the chat is going to be chanting USA as well because irony is definitely not lost on us at all. In the meantime, it looks like the Spanish are reinforcing uh, the sides here. It looks like the, the Portuguese have decided to invade Spain as well here. In uh, these areas in Northern Africa. And the Spanish, if they can do anything again. So they got a trade fleet on standby. I'm quickly looking through here towards their, uh, their setup. And specifically with their... Uh, they, got, they got a couple of troop transports. They got 36 of them. Is it going to be enough, though, because there is this massive fleet of 586 uh, ships in the in Gibraltar waiting to pretty much disengage anybody. Well, there they are. I think th those are all heavies. 77 heavies. On paper, a huge amount of ships. In reality, in this game, a tiny amount, considering there's 500 ships right there. 500 ships. 500 ships. It's pretty insane. Weren't the Dutch almost out of the war in the, la in the end of the last stream before it crashed? At least, yes, they were. However, what happened then is, is that the Denmark forced yet another war because they want to have that second spot. So they were pretty much saying, you know what? We want to go to war as much as humanly possible and, uh, yeah, get those points. If we actually take a look here at the ledger as well as the points over time, right now, this month, Portugal is getting the maximum score immediately followed by the Danes. The French are only a little bit ahead. Is it going to be enough to actually get pick up on those uh, 1,000 points? I doubt it's going to be the case. But if we look at like diplomatic technology, military technology, administrative technology, the growth rate is quite, uh, quite ridiculous for the Danes. However, the French are ahead in military rating. Specifically, where is it coming from? Military technology? No. Land morale? Yes. One whole point of land morale. 
in addition uh, over the Danes, which pretty much boosts the French in towards the positive direction that they need to be going.